Had I waited just another week or two, could have harvested all the potatoes together. It's December 23rd and these potato plants have uh, given up the ghost. So going to uh, dig them up and see what we got. So I'll start with the smaller plant. This one was the one that really never grew anywhere. It was healthy, just never grew. Whether or not we got anything, I can't say. Nothing I see so far. Well, well. <laughs> A couple of small ones again. I mean, who knows what the seed potato was like, how big it was. Might not have been very much to begin with, so being able to grow anything large just might not have been possible. It could have been a, sweet, a potato in there like this that it grew out of. But we got nothing here. But I'm hopeful that the other one with a really big uh, plant that grew really strong, hoping that one it's got a few potatoes in it. This is the plant that I was counting on to actually have uh, some decent potatoes. I mean, it was a really healthy uh, plant, really strong. And maybe it's got something going on down below. Oh, let's put her over. <laughs> we got one potato. Whoa, we got two. <laughs> okay, well, that was disappointing, actually. Considering how vigorous that plant grew, just getting that out of there is disappointing. But potatoes nonetheless. Well, not the great harvest I was hoping for. And certainly not what it suggested it would be, the way that one plant was growing. I'm surprised it was, really surprised it was just that, uh, those two small potatoes. But this is all gravy because I wasn't expecting to have any potatoes at all, so. It'll go into a stew. That's fine. But did get Christmas potatoes, but I was looking for something a little bit bigger. I haven't forgotten about the sugar beets and processing them. The uh, juice has been sitting in my refrigerator now since I uh, cut them up and uh, boiled them, but I actually have to boil them down now. And you actually need to see that whole process anyway, because I haven't shown anything, I don't think, other than the harvest of them. So. There's a, a whole thing uh, that's going to come on the uh, sugar beets. <laughs> on the sugar beets, that's what it is. We're still waiting to see if we get uh, what kind of sugar we get out of that. So this was just a quick uh, video. I saw the plants were dying. Figured I would update the, I would uh, update you on how the Christmas potatoes were going. And then uh, we see that they're not. And just to let you know that I haven't forgotten about the sugar beets. And that video will be coming soon. A couple other housekeeping notes. This is the greenhouse and it's got a new cover on it. If you check out my other channel, Homestead DIY, uh, you'll see a video on there about uh, uh, my recovering it and I'll put a link to it below. But we had a windstorm whip through uh, a month or so ago and it tore a gaping hole in the back of the plastic that I had over it. So as I had mentioned when I built it, putting a greenhouse underneath trees isn't the uh, best place, but I didn't really have much room elsewhere for it. But as you can see, everything's a mess in there. And because <laughs> you can actually see it because I've actually put greenhouse plastic on. Previously, you can see it right over here. I was using uh, just regular uh, drop cloth from Harbor Freights because greenhouse plastic, when I first built this, it was several hundred dollars for a roll of greenhouse plastic. Now, this has gone up, it used to be about $22, the uh, Harbor Freight plastic. Now it's gone up to over 30. And this came down to about $35.
So I figured I would go with the greenhouse plastic, but <laughs> that means I need to straighten up inside. Everything got uh, knocked around. Plus I think an animal got in there because there was like stuff just, I mean, really knocked around like the, a box of fertilizer was knocked over and uh, it, it, not normal for uh, just like a windstorm. I think an animal got in there and then couldn't get out <laughs> and it was running around, whether it was a squirrel or something else, I don't know, but <laughs> something went nuts in there and knocked everything over. So that's gonna be one of my tasks over the next uh, week or two is to uh, straighten this mess out. And that was uh, one of the tasks that I had to do now, I'll show you my fig tree. Since my potato harvest didn't pan out, figure I'll show you my fig tree. I had been growing it in a uh, 10, 20 gallon uh, container and it was doing fine there. I had a lot of uh, uh, figs this year. Small, but I had a lot of them. And I was getting ready to move it into my uh, greenhouse for the winter. <laughs> I noticed that the roots had grown out of the bottom of the container and went deep down into the ground. I ended up digging it up. The roots were about three feet long that were coming out. So dug a hole here in, uh, this is actually where my barrels were and I'm moving them out of here, moving them elsewhere. And so I figured I'd plant the uh, fig tree back here. So I dug a, a hole for the uh, tree to go into and then I dug a trench going out about three feet to the side and that's where uh, I put the roots. I'm gonna protect this for the winter, wrap it in some burlap. We'll see if it comes back again next year. It was doing fine in the container, <laughs> but now I had to plant it in the ground just that the roots were getting too long. Maybe I could have trimmed the roots, I don't know, but I didn't wanna damage the plant. So I dug it up and now it's in the ground. This is about three, four years old, three years old, I guess. And it started off as a little twig. It's It's been growing. So this is about eight weeks after uh, I planted the garlic and it's doing well. Looks like almost all of them have sprouted. I think I might've mentioned that last time. I thought there was some missing. Well, it looks like everything has come up. I don't think there's any missing uh, garlic bulbs. So that's good. But what I wanted to say is that this is about eight weeks in. Because what I do, planted November 5th, I believe it was. This is about the kind of growth that I would like on the uh, uh, garlic plants. It's not too much, and it shows that they have a good uh, uh, root development down below. They're a good size, so they're not, they haven't expended so much energy. Yeah, part of this windstorm, we actually had another windstorm a couple of days ago. They're not gonna uh, put, expend too much energy growing and then have to die back and then have to do it all over again. I think uh, beginning of November for me, this again is zone 7A in Northeastern New Jersey. I think this is a good time to plant them, but it is also almost the new year. So that means it's almost time to start planting again. All right, if you wanna see what we were doing in the garden last week, check out this video right here and then subscribe and hit that notification bell. And that way you'll be able to follow along on the progress of all of our vegetables as we try to grow a supermarket in our own backyard. Okay, thanks for watching.